Well hi, in this film I'm going to show you how to make a little leather sheath for a knife. And I've got a little chip carving knife here. I don't like leaving these blades exposed so I'm going to make a, a leather sheath. You could make a similar sheath for any kind of knife, perhaps one you'd made yourself. Anyway, I'm using a fairly simple technique today, a fairly quick one, which is just pop riveting with leather. So here's one of the bowl turning hooks that I made in one of the earlier films. And again, didn't want that getting damaged, so I've got a little leather cover for that one. I have also been doing a little bit of stitching with leather as well, and here's one of my bowl turning hook covers that I've stitched. But I'd say today I'm going to do one with rivets on this little knife, just to give you an idea of how to do it fairly easily and quickly. But it's fairly easy to pick up bits of leather. You can get them perhaps from old bags, old handbags, old shoes. I've got some from a shoemaking shop and it was just selling bags of offcuts. And I came across it when I was on holiday and thought, oh, that would do. So I got a bag of offcuts from them. Well, I'm using one of these self-healing green cutting mats and I find they're really useful for two reasons really. One is they don't blunt your knife when you're cutting, but the other thing is they've got these grid lines on them and they're really useful for lining up things, particularly for lining up right angles. So for example here, I can line up this piece nice and straight along there and then I can get my ruler and line it up with the grid lines the other way. And I know at that corner, I'll have a nice sharp 90 degree corner. So I'm going to line those up. I'm using a rotary knife. And I find these are very useful for cutting. They're very sharp, very effective. They have a little cover. This one has a blue plastic cover that slides back. So as I slide this handle, you'll see the blade becomes exposed. And they can cut a few millimeters deep which for leather work is actually quite useful. They use for fabric quite a lot actually. So I'm going to run down this ruler. And there, uh, it's a nice cut off of a nice sharp corner. Other thing to say actually, just from a safety point of view, is these rulers, which are special cutting rulers, are really good and I would heartily recommend them. They have a rubber base underneath the ruler and it has a very thickened front edge. And the reason for that is your cutting knife has a nice thick edge to run up against and it makes it all lovely and stable. It doesn't slip around any work surface. It has a bit of a groove to hold it down and you get a nice bit of pressure, your fingers are back and they're really good. Anyway, let's get on. So I'm just taking a cut now down the other side. There we are. I'll keep these off cuts because they may be useful for something. So let's just check how we're going size-wise. That's the knife. It's got to go in like that and I'll be popping the rivets down there. That's looking fine. Okay, I'm just doing some more cuts here. So I'm cutting now. You'll see this take shape in a minute when you see these cuts come through. So it's cut there, making a sort of L shape in a way. Again, lining that up, using my grid lines where I can. Tiny bit more out of there. Right, and then give you a vague idea what I'm doing here. There'll be the knife It'll be coming over like that, and then there'll be a little flap which will come down on the front. So, next place to cut is for the flap. Just make sure I've got my sizing about right. I think that's going to be all right. I'm going to make a separate little cover for the blade actually, just to give it a bit of added protection. So I'm going to have that top cover come down about there. It's all fairly approximate and to be frank, it doesn't matter too much. It's just a matter of making something that you're fairly happy with. So cut this off here. More pressure needed. Right, that's my basic shape now. I'm just going to now cut the curves for the little flap. It's quite tricky keeping the leather flat on the board, so one does need to support it quite a lot when one's doing this. Okay, 
And keep your fingers away from the blade. There we are. There. A little bit of trimming on the end, so I don't want too much of an actual point there. Right. So that's the little curved front piece. I'm going to put a rivet in that in a minute, well, a press stud rivet. So this is what it's looking like, and that will come down. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is actually do a little pop rivet press stud. Sorry, take two. First thing I'm going to do is do a little pop rivet press stud. And I've got a little assembly of bits here for them. So there's two bits for the popper and then two bits for the bit that it pops into. And the idea is you make a little hole. So I've got a, a little hole making tool here. Marked a little spot, I tap it. And that's made a nice clean hole. Same idea on my flat. another nice clean hole. So the next step now is to put the little rivet components together. So it's the push button and then there's the bottom part of that. And you have a little countersunk to a die you pop it into and a little tool you can give it a whack with and that will hold that on. Right, so that's the external side. That's the internal. Same with this part. So let's just correct myself here, make sure I've got that right. Yep, that's fine. So the little back piece goes through the hole. The little front piece sits on top. And set that on. It's the same sort of principle, you hit it and it snaps it together. There we are. So what we have there is a little working rivet, hopefully. Yes. So that's the riveting stage for the popper at the front. All done. Well, the next stage, I'm going to put these little rivets down the side and then along the base to actually make this sealed up. So again, I use a little punching tool and I'll start down at this corner because it will quite happily give us the right area and so again, same principle as before. Tap the little thing, out comes, and there's a nice hole there. Take one of the little brass rivets, push it through, find a cap, and then get base plate down, try and get that as central as I can top piece in, and tap it home. Yep, that's gone fine. So that's the corner riveted. So I'll carry on like that now. I'm going to go down this side and along the base. Try and get the spacing as, as even really as one can. another plug out there, do one more here. The little wads of leather as they come out, you can see in the little line there, they just pop out, so that's no problem. So again, pop these through. And this will be the base done. Try and line it up centrally, a little top cap. Again, using a little hollow dome punch. Just say so you can buy these little rivet sets from craft centers and leather suppliers, or you can get the mail order. They're very easy to get hold of. They're just called little leather rivets. These size here, they're eight millimeter. 
and you get them in different finishes. And they're not very expensive, so it's quite an economical way. There we are, that's that. So I will now get some down this edge. So I'm just doing the last two now, getting into my stride on this. <laughs> Again, just popping them through the base. It's quite important to try and keep all your work as flat as you can as you do this. Otherwise it buckles up horribly. There we are. Let's press them on loosely. That's looking fine. So again, just stamp them on. And hey presto, literally, we're there. Right, so let's hope the knife fits. There we are, a little pop of stud. One little knife cover, and that fits fine actually. What I am going to do, as I've got some leather off cuts left, I'm going to make a mini cover for that blade. Then I really have got the best of both worlds. Nice protection for that knife, and um, protection for the blade. One could put a rivet a little cross piece on actually on the back to put it around the belt so you could do it if you wanted to you can make a little belt loop on the back here by putting a couple of rivets in and that would fit onto a belt if you wanted to make, mount your knife onto a belt you can obviously do variations like you could do a curved scabbard type effect for a knife but that would do for my purposes but I'm just going to make this little blade cover so I've got an off cut here be fairly rough and ready but it will be an additional protection for it so that's the shape of my cover I'll put that on top it acts as a bit of a template for cutting round it's a little bit more tricky as I'm cutting the two layers of leather keeping my fingers out of the direction of travel on the blade. That, that's fine. A little bit more just there. Right, so again, same idea. A little pop in there. Don't need many on this, it's just a, an additional protector really. I think three would do it. There we are, my little holes. That one hasn't quite come through, so let's just give it another little tap there. There we are, there are my holes, so I'll get some more rivets and pop those in. Okay. So I'll just fold this over. Again, same principle, just pop the little rivets through. three, pop the caps on, one, two, three, and hammer them down. Gets quite quick once you get used to this. As a method it becomes quite easy and quite quick. Oops, try and hit it square on. <laughs> Does all roll around a little bit, but it's fine. There we are, so. There's a little cover fat knife. Pop it in the case. Press stud it down. And that knife will now keep its nice sharp edge, which I've put on with a nice diamond hone. So it's a really sharp chip knife. And there you are. You can leave it there. And if you want to, there are a couple of other things you can do. One is use a little edging tool, if you have one. And you can just skim a little fraction of leather off the edge. And it slightly rounds it. So it just stops a sort of cut edge being quite so prevalent. It's not, this isn't essential, it's just a bit of over-engineering and being fancy. 
but it's something you can do. It's not actually working quite so well on this thinner leather and it is better on a harness type leather but there you are, it just takes a little edge off so it gives that little rounded edge. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing me make that little cover there for that knife. You could apply the same principle really to any knife when it comes down to it, big, small, to an axe or even a draw knife. It's a very simple and quick method and it will protect this blade over the years. I'll put a video up sometime on doing hand stitching because that's also quite good fun and probably looks a little bit neater but it does take longer. So anyway, hope you enjoyed watching this one and thanks for watching.